File this under things I never thought would happen. A media group is hiring beat reporters just to cover Taylor Swift and Beyonce. Welcome to Planet Jan, where we have fun on the internet. Now, as a former news producer myself, I wanted to talk about this because this is pretty bizarre and I want to sort of break this down. Everyone knows Taylor Swift and Beyonce. They are American powerhouses and icons, rich AF and super successful. Here we got Taylor Swift and we got our queen Bay Beyonce. They're currently both on tour. Beyonce's got her like Renaissance tour and then Taylor's got her Eras tour. And I saw some coverage about this and I was like, that's that's kind of interesting. So there is a media group called Gannett. Now Gannett owns a bunch of newspapers and media outlets all around the country. The parent company used to also operate a bunch of TV stations and I used to work at CNN and my job was to interact a lot with the CNN affiliates and at one point I again I've spent many many days talking to people who worked at Gannett TV stations. The company spun that off to a different division and now it's called Tegna. So Gannett officially only operates the newspapers. They own USA Today, that network. I guess they also own the Tennessean, I guess based out of Tennessee. And I found these job listings where you can be literally the job title is Beyonce Knowles Carter reporter and Taylor Swift reporter. These are remote jobs, so you can live anywhere in the United States. I think with an exception of, I think it said Hawaii or Alaska. So let's take a look at these job listings. Like you're probably wondering like, what would you have to do? How do I get these jobs? If you're obsessed with Taylor Swift or Beyonce, maybe this would be for you. All right, so let's take a look at the Beyonce one first. And I'll link, by the way, if you're interested, I will link all of this below in the description box if you want to check out and apply. I'm going to guess they're going to get bombarded with applications, probably from a lot of, no offense, but a lot of unqualified people. It looks like they are looking for people with actual media or journalism experience. So I really doubt they would give this to like the entry level blogger or somebody just out of college, especially since I think this would actually be a pretty desirable position. I imagine they'll probably get a lot of internal candidates from people who already work at Gannett and would like this job. I think a lot of folks who work there already would probably see this as sort of like the cool cush job that everybody wants. So I do think these positions are going to be highly selective and competitive. All right, so you can apply. Let's see, do, 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 do. USA Today and the Tennessean, part of the USA Today network, are seeking our reporter to chronicle the music, fashion, cultural, and economic influence of Beyonce. These ladies must be flattered, by the way, to know that this media conglomerate is going to hire a reporter literally just to cover you. The international superstar and icon's impact is felt against generations. She's been a force in everything from how the country views race to how women think about their partners. All right, you can you can read all that. The reporter will identify why the star's influence continues to expand and the effect it is having on the music and business worlds. The successful candidate also will tap into stories about the Bayhive, her protective fan base, that propels the image and relevance of the artist. We are looking for a journalist with a voice but not a bias, able to quickly cultivate a national audience through smart content designed to meet readers on their terms. This reporter will chronicle the next big moments of Beyonce's career, from the end of her Renaissance tour and its $1 billion in sales to her next ventures and ende endeavors, offering readers uh, more than, okay. So what this is, you are going to be reporting on Beyonce, but your your work will be featured in all of these newspapers and like websites. All right, journalists must be willing and legally allowed to travel internationally. You gotta have a passport. All right, position is remote, can be based anywhere in the US except for Alaska and Hawaii or based at our headquarters in McLean, Virginia. If you live near one of our local newsrooms, there are a lot of them, you may have the option to use that as the base of operations. They do have requirements. So I know there's a lot of like young people out there that are like gonna be dying for this these jobs. I would probably not apply if you don't meet the criteria. This is like a serious publication. So if you don't meet this, uh, there again, I think they're gonna get a lot of like fan submissions that probably don't meet all of these standards. A bachelor's or master's in communications, journalism, marketing, or a related field. I'm guessing 
guessing they would probably be fairly flexible on that as long as you have at least a four-year degree, at least five years of journalism experience working in a digital-first newsroom, proven success in creating relevant, shareable stories. So they're going to have, you're not only going to be writing articles and stuff, uh, this looks like they want you to do social media as well. So you're probably going to be having to create content, whether it be like taking photos, videos, that sort of thing, maybe being on camera, I don't know for like their web stuff, a nose for finding interesting stories, a commitment to experimentation. Okay. The ability to work with a nationwide team of reporters, editors, photographers, and producers, clear and concise writing style, a thorough understanding of metrics and how to use data to understand audience behavior and to inform coverage decisions, a firm command of AP style. That is very important. You probably need to have some published works out there. The other thing I would say, they they might take a look at you more closely if you yourself have a large social media following. So if you have a ton of followers on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, they're probably going to give you more of a chance because you can help disseminate the your work. And the thing is, the media industry is about getting more eyeballs on the content. So if you can help do that and you already, I do think media outlets are starting to look at how big of a social media presence you have. So I do think that is going to be a factor. And if you have that, you're probably going to be a much more appealing candidate. All right. Willingness to travel extensively. OK, so that's cool. You might get to go to like some concerts and events and stuff like that. Maybe you'll get to interview them. Ability to report in more than one language preferred. There's probably some wiggle room there, but that probably does help. Uh, requires a valid driver's license, reliable transportation and the minimum liability insurance required by state law. You do have to pass a pre-employment background check, motor vehicle record check and drug street is drug screen. That is pretty standard. So don't be scared about that. All right. So here's what you need to submit. All right. Don't limit your upload to a resume. Show us what you've done to do. So put together a single document file that includes the following in this order, your written resume, one to two pages, a video cover letter that tells us via video why you are great for this role, links to four to eight online samples of your work. Show us what you've produced or had a hand in what best reflects what you can do in your desired role. The fact that they're asking for five years of experience, they probably want someone who's had some sort of journalism job and you should definitely have uh, some published works out there. Like if you've written for news sites or if you've written for online magazines, not just a blog with two readers, like maybe a larger, more well-known website. If you have work, if you worked with that, I can see them, you know, you being a contender. But again, I just want to kind of help people have realistic expectations because I, I've seen these articles float around the internet. And I do think if you're looking at these job listings, if you don't even know what a lot of this stuff is, I probably would not apply. And the Taylor Swift job listing looks pretty similar. Basically the same requirements. This one, of course, is just for uh, Taylor Swift. It looks like they have the same job listings. They just sort of plugged and played with the bio for Taylor Swift and Beyonce. Another thing I know you're wondering is how much do these jobs pay? And they do have a pay window here. And I'm going to give you my honest thoughts about that as someone who worked in media for over 15 years. The hourly rate right for this role will range between $21.63 and $50.87 cents per hour. I think it's per hour. Variable compensation is not reflected in these figures and based on the role may be applicable. Exact compensation may vary based on skills, experience, location, and union representation if applicable. So based on a 40 hour work week, the lower pay range for this job is about $43,000. If you manage to get hired at the $50 an hour rate, that's like, I think it was a little under $105,000 which you're probably like, wow, Jen, that's a lot of money. So here's the catch. They're very, very unlikely to hire someone in at this $50 an hour rate. This is a wild, like this pay scale is just wildly different. You'd have to be someone pretty damn special, Pulitzer winning journalist or something to get hired in at that $50 an hour rate. I'm going to guess they're more looking for someone at the lower end of this range. I would guess they would hire the person between $25 and $30 an hour for a couple different reasons. I find with journalism jobs, this is often just pretty deceptive. 
media outlets are very cheap. Also, I think a lot of newspapers are probably going through some tumultuous times. A lot of businesses are. Media in particular, traditional media is going through a pretty rough time. There's a lot of layoffs in this business. People getting reassigned and then getting demoted. Like this happens all the time. And the media industry in general is a very volatile industry to stay employed in because they're all, newsrooms are always looking to cut costs or they may ru be running a skeleton crew because they're trying to save money. Like it's a shit show in terms of the employment situation, in terms of like the labor stuff. That's just my experience. I think a lot of other people have had similar experiences though. And when everyone in TV is talking about their first jobs, we've all, we all got paid like $20,000 a year. That's what I made in my first TV job. And just to put things into context, the most I ever made in TV news was about $75,000 a year. That was my last year at CNN. And that also included like a small bonus. There were some good benefits there. But again, I'd been working in the business for 15 years. And the most I ever made was $75,000 a year. And I had a I had a pretty good job. A lot of people I know are not so lucky and they make a lot less. So that's what leads me to believe that I think Gannett is probably going to look for somebody that they can pay about $25 an hour. Again, not terrible. I don't know how many. And the other thing you need to know about these like journalism jobs is that a lot of them, this says hourly, but it may be like a, I don't know, maybe like more of a salary. I don't know how they're going to be compensated, but in all of my jobs, I was salary and that meant I was exempt from overtime. So I often would work like 60 hours a week and get like no extra money. That happens a lot. You could say that's uh, not cool from an employment standpoint. I would agree, uh, but I find a lot of newsrooms do tend to kind of use and abuse employees like that in terms of taking advantage of their their willingness to do anything for the company, especially with younger employees. I don't think they need to pay someone a lot of money for this these roles because I think they're going to get a lot of applicants, including a lot of internal candidates who already work for Gannett. Another thing I would say that I'm suspecting with these roles, okay, these would be considered cush jobs in this newsroom. I think if there is sort of a downturn in the economy or Gannett has to kind of tighten the budget, I think these jobs would be the first to go. Just being real here. If you are able to stay on with the company, you would probably get absorbed into more of like the uh, more of like the general newsroom where you would be covering a bunch of stuff. Having a beat reporter at any media outlet is considered a luxury. Like a lot of newsrooms don't have beat reporters. So a beat reporter means you're covering a specific type of story all the time. So you could be a court reporter and covering what's happening at your county, the county courts. You could be like an education reporter, an environmental reporter, a politics reporter, an investigative reporter. As the news industry has sort of consolidated over the years, kind of the slogan a lot of them are using is let's do more with less. So while newsrooms may, I feel like that's more of like a golden era thing of the past. So a lot of newsrooms now are just kind of consolidating. And then also they'll say something like, you're going to wear a lot of hats here. Reading between the lines, that means we're going to have you do like eight different jobs and not pay you anything more. That's what it really means. And I'm also surprised that Gannett's not just hiring you under like the umbrella of an entertainment reporter or something, and then they could have you covering a bunch of different things. The other thing I could see, I could see you experiencing some like work scope creep in terms of, well, technically your job is the Taylor Swift reporter or the Beyonce reporter. I can absolutely see the Gannett management expecting you to do other things besides that, especially if like, I imagine the Taylor Swift and Beyonce beats aren't ridiculously busy all the time. So I think maybe in like slower periods, I can see them expecting you to do stuff that's outside that scope of assignments. That's my honest assessment of these job listings. So you can believe me, you cannot believe me, but I, you know, I guarantee you that's probably what's going to happen. While this seems like a dream job, I think there's a lot of downsides I think that I could see with uh, this type of role in that you're going to be, again, if you don't have like a Taylor Swift concert that day or whatever, they're going to have you do, you know, you might be covering like some random boring stuff that you probably don't want to. So that happens even if your newsroom employer says that won't happen. 
most of us have found that that they absolutely will basically demand you do other stuff that's outside your normal job role because you have to be a team player. Newsrooms are always understaffed. So even though you're, you're the Taylor Swift reporter, you could be going out and covering like a fire. I can absolutely see them doing that or doing like weather coverage or some other nonsense. I just... I feel like these job listings are too good to be true. And I think they're trying to, I think they're making the job listing look a lot better than what it actually will be in reality. Again, the pay, guys, they're not going to pay you $105,000 a year. You're going to be lucky. I think this person is going to be lucky to get $50,000 a year from this job. I can see the hours still being fairly long. I think it's cool that you are able to be remote, but if you if you think this is going to be a walk in the park, they're going to Gannett's going to find a way to make your life a living hell. Again, all media jobs are like this. I know very few people who have worked in the media industry or who are still in the media industry that don't constantly bitch and complain every day for for good reason because, you know, it's just like it, it is what it is, you know, and that's why a lot of people end up getting burned out from the media industry and and leaving. So, I do think that's something you should know if you are applying for these jobs, but that's just my it's just my analysis as a former media member. But I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know down below in the comments. Do you think these jobs are kind of ridiculous? Do you think they're cool? What else do you think Gannett is not telling you in this job listing? I'd love to hear what you think. Anyways, I'm Jen and I hope to see you next time. On your way out, if you could hit the like button and subscribe, I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers.